All right, I'm going to be doing a recording for the workflow that goes into getting all of the general statistics for our gamer group. And I'm going to start off with the data entry process. I have two ways of getting the data. One is either from the WhatsApp. We have all the different screenshots that typically Brian will take of the different teams and what the scores and the statistics were for each of the, the teams. The other one is that sometimes when I'm in the game, I will bring up, I'll do a quick keyboard shortcut for uh, taking a screenshot and that gets saved into a folder for Command & Conquer Generals. The screenshots will typically look like this. And so it's a little bit nicer. It's a little bit easier. I had it in the back of my mind that maybe someday I'll come up with an optical character recognition algorithm to be able to like easily import this into the system. I tried initially something, but it wasn't 100% accurate at being able to capture all the numbers, even when it was a nicer screenshot like this. So the technology uh, reliability may not be as good as us just putting it in manually. So those are my two ways of being able to get screenshots. And so once it's actually in, this is our latest game that's on the, the gamer uh, group. What we'll do is we go into the actual spreadsheet, which is at this URL, which is also in the, the WhatsApp description link. And I'm just going to delete this to show how it like actually works. And uh, thank you, Scott, for putting in that, those uh, most recent games. But first of all, you got to copy over this index, which is easy enough. You just uh, copy, I'll copy over one of the cells that doesn't have the border in order to be able to not have the border get duplicated and copy and paste. And it's uh, just a formula to increase the previous number by one. So that's done. And then if it's a new date, I'll have to manually type it in. Otherwise, I can just copy and paste the date over for uh, what that's supposed to look like. And then we'll put in the names. I'm going to split the screen so that I can see it a little bit better. And so I'll just go down. So Scottagorn, and it autofills. Neo, Shift, Matt, Skippy, and Tim. Actually, Tim in our thing is TVH. So, and then uh, you have to make sure that the capitalization is right, because if it's not capitalized the same way for each player, the algorithm is going to um, think that it's a separate uh, player, and I'll go in and go figure, like, why do we have players, and there's one player that doesn't have nearly as much data as anybody else, and usually you have to just go and do a faint and didn't replace, so you, like, Find and sheet, let's say it's a uh, PCAP, this is our most common one of not capitalizing that one. And so let's say, okay, so this one. So find, uh, give me a more detail. So I want you to find PCAP, match the case, and replace with PCAP in all sheets. Um, actually, just this sheet for now but we may use the um, all, all sheets for you know, something else. At least one instance of PCAP with PCAP. Now, if somebody wants to change their player name and you have all this old data, so like when I originally had my name of Robert and I wanted to change it over to shift. So if we say shift and change it to uh, Robbie P, I don't know. So if you say all sheets, then it'll look through the entire, um, all the different sheets that that's going to be in, and you can replace all. And I'm doing Robbie P so that it's easy to shift back just for this example. But replace all, replace in all sheets, and it'll say we found 249 occurrences in it. Okay, cool. Uh, let's shift it back. All sheets, match case, replace all. And that's how you can change a player's name. Cool. So we've got the names in. So now we're going to do the factions. I don't do the super specific factions. Um, maybe someday somebody wants to be able to do that, but we don't have all the data and the data is not available there. And so it uh, would be a little bit difficult. Might be interesting to see the different factions and what the accuracy is, but that's it. And then we look for who won. And so I usually have to go into the um, Description here we see that team two won, and in the previous one he took that team and uh, team two was 
Scott and Shifty. And so we go back to here, and so Scott and Shift, and just Pi can Vincent in order for the statistics page in order to work properly, and the the, uh, the win to loss ratio and the best um, strongest teammate, strongest opponent to work. By convention, for those things to work, you have to have the winning team be team one. Um, so that's one. And then team two, uh, I'm just going to choose team one again from the, the photo so that we can swap those. So for team one, we had Matt and Skippy. So Matt and Skippy is team two, and then obviously Neo and Tim are team three. Okay, uh, individual game, each game along with each player gets an index number. And uh, so what this is going to be looking for is when the ranking starts over. So you have to go over to here. This is the, the rank, the inverse rank, and the normalized rank. So just copy this. And so this is one just typed out, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is a formula of eight minus this number. And this one says, okay, for the maximum number for this particular game, what was the actual rank between zero and one. And so it ranks them from zero to one, depending on the number of players. Okay, and when you do that, this game index will also increase. It originally was 488, now it's at 489. We've got the teams, we've got who won, and so now we can start doing the actual grunt uh, statistics input. We see the top left is 116, tab, 31, tab, nine, oops, nine, four, tab, two, one, zero tab three nine tab and one two two five eight zero i put the arrow over so that the tab uh, enter will reset to that uh, units created statistic and do it again nine six eighty eight six five six five five three three five seven and I'm going to just do the resources less because I can't see it and it's going to be faster. 7, 4, 5, 8, 4, 8, 2, 4, 2, 2, 2, 5, 5, 4, 4, 1, 8, 1, 7, 1, 0, 4, 8, 3, 1, 2, 6, 1, 9, 1, 1, 2, 4, 1, 4, 0, 5, 2, 3, 1, 2, 0, and Let's redo resources. 118, 4, 2, 3, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, is that along with all of these colored cells being filled, the last part that is used to determine which games occurred this rank is these extra columns of month, year, and date. Really, it's just these two, the month and the year. This is how it like sees which particular date and year uh, it should be looking at for this month's statistics versus last month's statistics. And for um, streaming, this is uh, a statistic of how lopsided the statistics were. So like did team one take six out of the eight different statistics? Was it split half and half of which one was more favored? Um, and so all you have to do is just take that entire thing and drag the bottom right corner in order to copy it all the way down. Um, and it'll just do it. Or you can just double click, which will bring it down to the bottom of the data that's already occurred. So you can just double click it, it goes all the way down. And now that this information is here, we should be able to go back to stats. And there it is, rank this month is filled in, rank change, etc. Because all of those dates uh, are going in for what the win loss ratio was this month versus ratio last month. And that's how it's calculating all of that. So this is the quick and dirty way if Tableau hasn't been updated to be able to see what the rank is, etc. Okay. okay, so, so that, that is the, the data entry um, process, and now I'm going to move, oh, and just to make things pretty, what I'll also do is come over here and grab each individual game, uh, select all the different cells, and do a solid, uh, solid border, outer border, which just makes it look nice. 
And if uh, like there's extra borders that are hanging around, say you like copied this one into here, and, or I don't know, this one into here, and actually it's not doing it right now, but messing with those borders can uh, leave with little cell things. And you can just go back up here and say no borders and then it'll get rid of it like it did for that particular shell. Go on and do that. That's it. Uh, first part's done. And um, now we'll move on to the uh, the pipeline. Okay, so uh, here uh, we're back in Spider and we're gonna get things uh, going. So uh, I have to go into the directory for where the uh, files are located that the, the generals uses. So the documents generals and if you want to like take a look what that actually like looks like so we've got uh, some basic files for being able to access uh, google uh, with the api in order to get into the actual sheet and then it's got some excel sheets for um, uh, do being able to generate all of the different uh, statistics and finally the tableau files for where it eventually will get uh, visualized but this is actually a relatively simple part now that the you know 500 lines of code have all been generated uh, i just have to hit play and so now it's going to it just finished copying all of the data from the google spreadsheet and now it's going to start um, creating nominal data for all the different games uh, pretending that it's like making simulated games based on average statistics for the uh, players in order to be able to predict um, who's going first. Now it's uh, generated its uh, predictions for which uh, statistics are most important for um, uh, predicting who's going to win. And then it goes through the entire history of our games, uh, date by date, game by game, and uh, based on the previous 25 games, it looks at what, uh, based on the predictive win rate and what the statistics were for the last 25 games, it gives the, the essentially the, the power of uh, each player, and that gets visualized as a line graph eventually in Tableau. Um, so here's the quick dummy check of like, is everything looking about right for what it should look um, for what those uh, people uh, did? And... It has some randomness in how these things are generated, but I have a random state that's like always the same. And so um, it should generate the same results from run to run. And it's how we maintain the statistics uh, throughout all of this time. There's some nominal um, accuracy scores and predictions that are going on here. And so here, tenfold accurate predictions is about 80% or 78, depending on which uh, um, accurate statistics accuracy statistic you wanted to go with. Um, this is just telling me how far we are in um, getting the actual dates and generating it. Otherwise, it would just be like blinking blank for a long time. And then this is that the cells have been uh, updated back on the Google Sheet. And that also tells me that it's generated all the Excel files that I need in order to be able to do the Tableau. We'll uh, shift now to the Tableau program. All right, we're here in the Tableau, and so now uh, open up the General's uh, workbook. And here, uh, it's working off of a separate file than the actual base Excel, and so every time that I open it up, I have to go over to the data and say I need you to refresh that extract because it's just an idiosyncrasy of if you want to post it to the online uh, system so that the other guys can see it, then it requires a separate file, which needs to be refreshed based on the Excel document. So there it is. It's just finished. And then if it's a new month or anything like that, then I'll come up here in order to set the default date of what we're looking at. Um, so depending on where this date is, we'll tell you what the, the stats are. So win percent this month is based on where this date is located. So if I say the first, you see that this is where it's looking at and then change again. Ta -da. Same kind of stuff. Uh, so let's go back to December 1st, because it really doesn't matter the day, it just matters the month that you pick, because it's looking at that entire month's worth of statistics. And do a quick dummy check that uh, the rest of this is looking all right. Uh, let's see, look at the default. Cool. Teams. These are generally. I'll change this to some of the, the players that we see more often. I don't let's see, there's Pancake. We've got Shift, Jack, me, and Mike. Um, let's stick a, a heart in here. 
I'll change Scottagorn for hard and maybe STM for Titan. Okay, uh, go back to the main overall page. And if I want to, sometimes I'll just select a, uh, a player as like the default. Um, so like, um, I guess in my case, because I'm the top ranking player right now, which makes little sense, I'll just, uh, I'm sure that'll change, but it has uh, had an increasing power over the last uh, month or two. So third player, whatever. Um, it seems really wrong that I'm ranked higher than my brother right now, but uh, I'll just uh, highlight that and then go into the server and post to Tableau Public. And that's it. And it's posted. Now everybody can use the uh, use the worksheet. All right. Now I'm going to go into some more detail about the general statistics worksheet and uh, how this gets updated if you want to add more players. If you want to add another player, the first thing that you got to do is uh, choose a color for them. Everything here is um, conditionally formatted. And so you come over here to format conditional formatting, and you have a color for each of these individual players. Let's say that we're going to be adding a new player and we're going to call him uh, Bag of Donuts. So, right, cells is equal to... Bag O Donuts. And you're going to say this is going to be applied to the entire range of C and we're going to give him the color of done. So now, when we put in bag of donuts, it'll be colored, and if we wanted to, we could change his text as well, but that uh, doesn't really matter. But all right, so we can add this player, bag of donuts, and we're gonna come over and add him to all the different places that we need. Uh, here we have copper kettle, same kind of formatting. And if you ever want to like get the similar kind of formatting as uh, other spots, then you can pretty much just like copy, control C, and and you can also paste special paste conditional formatting. And that's it. Here, you got to cut to this part. So I'm going to control X and move it down one and verify that this is uh, going to have to get updated from 2.1 to 2.2. Two. And I'm just going to copy that across the ways. And games logged. It doesn't have to get changed. Average factions. Those are going to be fine. So now we just uh, copy this entire row and verify that it is looking at the correct location. So then, if you want to get the strongest uh, strongest teammate and strongest opponent, these are going to be looking at the matchups page, which is probably the most complicated one that has to get adjusted. So I'm going to go back and... Uh, this was a backup for the Tableau page, but um, it should get generated automatically by... It just gives the actual predictive ratings um, of each player and then goes in and makes the, the teams. Um, I don't think that that should have to really change. We'll update this with bag of donuts. And now this is the final part. Okay, so we go in. I'm just going to take these possible players and say copy. You can do the uh, conditional formatting on here, but I'm not going to do that right now. Um, and so here we right click and say paste special and transpose. We have Titan, and in addition, we have Bag of Dunn. All this stuff is going to get copied. And we also have to make sure that uh, this number of games um, matches how many games we've had. Obviously, this hasn't been updated in a while. This is game 489. So I'm just going to pull this down. Uh, it should understand the pattern just by seeing like the first few. So I'm going to pull this to 1,000. Actually, there we go. And over here. Now, that's it. And so all this is clear and empty, but we're good for another couple hundred games. 
and this is going to tell which uh, whether or not the the player won um, for that particular game or if they lost. So that's the um, the teammates page. And so now let's go to matchups. And so the matchups is going to use that data in order to be able to calculate which one who won the most and who lost the most. I'm again going to come over here and pull this uh, possible players to matchups. And first we're going to just paste bag of donuts and paste uh, transposed. There we are again. And so here I've got the note for how the instructions are supposed to go. So ensure that the, the teammates tab has been updated with the new player's name, which we did. At, when you're adding a new player, ensure the HLOOKUP index 1 is in the row below the newest player. So here we've got the 1, and it is next to the newest player, so we got to move this. Uh, so I'm going to copy this, pull it over, make sure that that's the same. Just copy that one line. And now update this pull it down so that is copied. Okay, so now the, the lookup index has been updated properly, and we're going to do the same thing on this other one. So this this particular block is for uh, winning with a player, and this one is used for uh, losing when you're against that player. Do the same thing. Copy, paste, and update this down. Let's go back. And that got updated. All right, so the uh, index has been updated for the new player. And then add a new player to both columns, which we did. Copy the formula in column B for the last new player in the column B of the person you are adding and change the range with an absolute reference so it advances to the next letter. Here we are. So this is the formula. Um, and I'm going to first delete this. So take the the formula from, it actually should say column C. So there we go. Column C. And then this one. So the absolute reference that it's referring to C20. So it's seeing itself as a C22. So this should say C23. And that's it. And so now if C23 this is not equal A22, so looking next to it and going over, then we're fine. And this should all be blank because there's no games with actual bag of donuts. And then this range has to get shifted over from teammates UU. So here, teammates UU originally, we copied this formula from Titan, and teammates UU was for Titan. And so we have to shift that over to V for bag of donuts. So here we go back to the matchups. And so teammates UU, it's VV. And same thing here. And that's it. And so now we can just pull this formula over, copy it all the way over. And it'll be blank. But if we were to say, I'm going to go into the actual teams now give him a game and say pretend that instead of Matt we had bag of donuts and so now he should have some actual statistics this will work better all right so this is going to work if uh, instead of Matt we're going to give it to uh, instead of shift we're gonna have bag of donuts and so now under matchups bag of donuts one with Scottagorn 100% of the time and we're going to do the same formula adjustment for here. So this one, uh, we just copy this. So C22 is not equal A22. This should now be C23. It's the same thing. And then move this column over again. Co 
copied and pull it over. And so we see that um, when playing against Matt or playing against Skippy, because it only looks at teams one, it's not meant for multiple teams. For Matt and Skippy, it was able to beat them. And so 0% losing against them. And that's it. One other thing that you got to do after you've uh, added the correct row for the future player or for the bag of donuts person is you also have to copy this entire uh, column and paste it over to that future player and so that this uh, gets updated and you'll do the same thing for this block of cells. It'll look clear but you gotta cut and copy and paste in order for it to be there. Okay um so copy, copy, copy the formula, column C to the newest player in column C, so it advances to the next letter, and then update stats page with the new player. And so go back over here, and the stats page, increase that row, and that's it. And that's how you add a new player. All right, thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope that this was informative for how the uh, statistics are supposed to actually go, and hope it's helpful in the future. Thanks.